We move on now to part C and we have to sketch the graph of y equals the mod of g of x. So we'll put that down here for part C that y equals the mod of g of x. Okay. Now to do this question what I consider first of all is what g of x as a graph would look like. So let's just draw some axes x-axis, y-axis and g of x then is 2 over x minus 3 and this is a reciprocal graph it's based on the graph of 1 over x okay now I'd like to think that you know what the graph of 1 over x looks like hopefully you realize that it's something like this where it tends to 0 here okay and it tends to the y-axis like so okay so that's the graph of 1 over x let me just put it down here let's just say we call it h of x if you like equals 1 over x okay now we've got to build this into 2 over x minus 3 so what I can do is now replace the x with x minus 3 and so that would give me a new function let's just write it out here it would be the function h of x minus 3 and this would be equal to 1 over x minus 3 and I'd like to think that you knew what this would do to any graph subtracting 3 from x translates the graph three units to the right okay so if we draw this on we could on a new set of axes okay so just do that so our new graph okay would have shifted three units to the right in fact what we've got then is instead of it the graph approaching the y-axis it is now approaching what we call an asymptote and that is the line x equals 3 so if I put a 3 there okay this line has equation x equals 3 so if I draw the graph in now the graph of 1 over x minus 3 it's going to look something like this okay now the graph that we've got though is 2 over x minus 3 so what I'm going to do now is take the function h of x minus 3 which is 1 over x minus 3 and to create 2 over x minus 3 what I've got to do let's just scroll this up a little bit more is multiply it by 2 so in other words 2 lots of h minus 3 okay is going to create the equation 2 over x minus 3 and again I'd like to think that you would know that multiplying a function by 2 would stretch it parallel to the y-axis okay by a factor of 2 so what's that going to mean well it's going to mean that our new graph okay let's just draw the axis in again okay remember it had an asymptote okay at x equals 3 so we just put that one in okay x equals 3 and if we stretch this graph by a factor of 2 it's essentially just going to be pulled out it's going to be a bit more elongated okay so what that's going to do is well almost look much the same really but it's going to be essentially that okay just stretched out a bit by a factor of two so the shape doesn't really appear to change that much okay so that is the graph of two over x minus three now we're asked to do the mod of this and the mod means that the graph that the values that we get can never be negative so in other words 
the graph when it's below the x-axis is always converted to a positive value. So what this is going to mean then is that this part of the graph, anything below the x-axis, gets reflected back across the x-axis so it's going to appear above. It's going to appear something like this. Okay? This part of the curve gets reflected to be like this. So that will be our final graph. So let me just draw that in for you. Okay, so at the end of the day, if we draw our axes, okay, y there, we have our asymptote at x equals 3. Let's put that one in and say that it's x equals 3. And the curve, essentially this part's going to stay the same, so it's going to come down here, approach the x-axis, okay, but the bottom part gets reflected so it looks something like this. Okay? Let's just push that up a bit further. And this then is the graph of y equals the mod of g of x. Okay? Now I've taken quite a lot of time over this just to show you the steps. With practice you should find that you could carry those steps out mentally and then just go straight to drawing that. Okay? Anyway, we've got to indicate clearly the equation of the vertical asymptote, which I've done. That's x equals 3. And we've also got to label the coordinates, the point at which the graph crosses the y-axis, which is this point here. And we've not done that as yet. So when any graph crosses the y-axis, it is when x is 0. So if I put x is 0 into our equation, if we put x is 0 into here, you'll notice we get 2 over 0 minus 3, so in other words, minus 2 thirds. But you must remember we were taking the mod of this, so it's this point is negative 2 thirds, but it gets reflected up here, and so taking the mod means that we actually end up with this point here being at 2 thirds, so we have the coordinate 0, 2 thirds. Okay? So it crosses the y-axis at naught two-thirds. And that brings us to the end of part C. And finally, part D, let's just scroll up again.